Well, today's 2B networking. Mm. This is English ale, which is exactly right when the sun's out like this and the shade gets on your eyes. But when the ale's sun's out, it's time to get out into the English sunshine and make the most of it in today's 2B networking. And what I wanted to talk about today was what excites me in networking. I put out a tweet saying, ask me anything. And the question that came up is what excites me in networking? And I think I'm going to enjoy this. One of the things that I really like is white box. I think that white box ethernet, now I know that most of you aren't buying white box and I don't think most people ever, I definitely think it's forcing a transformation in our industry. Cisco's being forced to unbundle its software so that some customers who want to use third party hardware with Cisco software can do that. Some customers are buying Cisco hardware and then putting their own software on top. Some customers are even forcing Cisco to support protocols that Cisco doesn't want. Now that's a really fundamental transition in the market and although the movement's very, very early, I think that you shouldn't forget just how much impact Whitebox has had. So who are the other vendors? Cumulus Networks and Pika8. Both of them make uh, software to go on Whitebox switches. Um, both of them have been on the Pack Pushes podcast and talked about their products, so go over there and check out the details. But really, those two people have shown you that it's possible to build perfectly successful, financially stable companies by putting software on top of someone else's hardware. Now, of course, we've seen plenty of other companies do the same thing. Mostly they're about SDN controllers. So companies like Big Switch Networks, of course, have been building their own operating system to put on white box switches. But that's really about the SDN controller, not about the switch itself. Big supporters of this, of course, have been Dell with its open network strategy. I think last time I looked at Dell switches, they were supporting, I don't know, eight or nine different vendors on top of their open hardware models on this open networking series. The last one in this space is Facebook, of all people, because Facebook has driven it into the open market, that, along with their open compute project, and been out there driving, saying, we will buy products that do this. We can see this, we know this works, we've got this working, and throwing a handful of resources into the public space or throwing some code over the wall for people to make use of has been a, a validation or an endorsement of this strategy that enterprises can't ignore. If Facebook can make it successful with white box networking, why can't you? Not everybody's going to use white box, but the impacts of white box are already right across the industry. So yeah, I think white box is probably the area which most excite me, not because I think you're going to use it, but because it's driving a, a, a change across the market. Would we have companies like Big Switch Networks and Flexi, Pika 8 and Cumulus Networks being as successful as they are and surviving quite handily really excites me and every time I look at I, I every time I see a Merchant Silicon announcement, every time I talk about ASICs, every time I talk about white box switches, I get a sense that this movement is unstoppable. So another area which is really interesting to me is formal verification. We've seen a big rise in analytics and, and startups that are doing various forms of deep tech. The second most important thing that's changing this right now is this concept of formal verification. That is, you can take networking configurations and network diagrams and network, load them into some sort of graph, database, engine, storage, break the configurations down into primitives and then calculate paths through the network. Now this isn't a routing protocol, this is above that. This is about firewalls and access control lists and cross engines and all sorts of amazing just about any tech. The thing about formal verification that really excites me is the fact that it's mathematics. It's not, uh, we, you know, we've seen lots and lots of different products that do things by, um, you know, polling S and MP variables and charting, being smart tricks with what we've got. What we haven't seen is a generational change into path calculation beyond what we've done before. You know, the shared state databases and picking the best next hop. Formal verification sort of takes that idea and moves it way beyond that. And although in SD-WAN we've seen people start to use overlays instead of hop by hop, and that meant flow based, what formal verification does is it puts the future of networking on a completely different footing. And those two companies really have this market wrapped up. They've got early stage investments. They put the hard work into taking the concept behind, the maths behind formal, formal verification maths, a full on division of mathematics that you need to learn and understand. And then what they've then done is turn that into an execution. So they actually have these engines that can reduce device configurations and firewall configurations down to something that can be loaded into, into the formal verification model so that you can calculate paths and where packets are going to be dropped. And you talk to customers of these and they're actually seeing these things put 
highlighting problems that they never knew existed. And these are networks that are manned by teams of dozens of engineers. So formal verification to me shifts is a major trend. I, don't, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to convince ordinary people what they do. But I think that eventually they will.